What's up guys? Uh, I haven't done a freaking regular video in like a month. So this is uh, episode, holy frick, 347. Uh, hopefully you guys have been watching the live streams I've been doing. I kind of replaced these videos with live streams, but hopefully you've been watching those and enjoying those. But hey, welcome back to regular edited videos. I'm actually using a new camera. So if it looks different than usual, that's the reason why. If it sounds different than usual, that's the reason why I'm using a mic, a camera. Anyway guys, I have uh, a smallish haul, but I plan on showcasing one of these items because I'm very, very excited for it. It is a Grail pickup. It's a vintage Grail pickup. It's something that uh, I didn't even imagine I would be picking up anytime soon. It's something that I've always wanted. It's something that's pretty pricey. This was before car bill number two. If you're uh, familiar with my whole car situation, I'm having a bit of a situation with my piece of crap car. Anyway, we got a toy haul. Modern toys, vintage toys, and vintage comic books. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back to the channel. All right, so we're gonna start with the comic books. Uh, I have uh, participated in a few online comic book sales with some of my local comic book stores recently and I picked these guys up and I'm very, very excited for these. Uh, one of these I actually already had, I did not know. When you're on these comic book sales, basically you have to claim it like right away. If you think you need it, you have to claim it right away because if you're not the first person that claims it, someone else is gonna claim it and then you missed out on it. So I thought I actually needed this one. This is um, Excalibur, I think it was like special edition number one or it was the introduction of the team Excalibur in the late 80s. I think 88 is when this came out, but it's Alan Davis, Paul Neary, Chris Claremont did the writing. Just an awesome book. I loved Excalibur as a kid. Nightcrawler, Captain Britain, Megan, Rachel, Phoenix, uh, freaking Shadowcat. The rest of these I did not have, so I'm very, very happy to pick them up, but uh, this is a Todd McFarlane Spider-Man number four versus the Lizard. Todd McFarlane was my favorite, still is my favorite, artist of Spider-Man ever. I loved his run on Amazing Spider-Man. I loved his issues that he did on the regular Spider-Man title. And then he left to do Spawn. Um, speaking of independent comic books, because Spawn was an independent comic book at the time with Image. Speaking of, there was a terrible segue. Speaking of, Mirage Studios. Bam. This is the original Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic book. First printing, I loved this comic book so much. I fell off probably around issue 30, but the first 30 issues of TMNT were some of my favorite comic books ever as a kid. Uh, I don't know what happened to those original comic books. I had all of them, I had the whole run. I had issue one. The issue one that I had was like a second print, but issue two on were all first prints, but um, I, I struggled to remember what the heck happened to those. So I'm trying to reacquire that, that whole run, like issues one through 30 of TMNT, but this is issue 17. I think Eric Talbot did the art in this one. I absolutely freaking love these black and white TMNT comic books. This is issue 23. Pretty badass cover there of Splinter. And then here is issues 24 and 26. I still need 25. There we go again. There we go. <laughs> so let's get to the modern toy pickups. There's only a few here. I can't wait to get to the vintage one. The vintage one is kind of the main point of this video. I want to do a showcase on this item, which I'm looking at right now. But let me show you what I picked up. So based on the thumbnail, you know that I picked these two guys up here. I was at uh, Target buying some groceries for my mom, and I walked over to the figure aisle, and they had this one. So this is a very, very early, I would say, because uh, I actually had this one on pre-order, and it's not due until like July 1st. But here it is, May 2nd, my final day on this earth as a 44 year old. Tomorrow's my birthday, May 3rd. So probably when this thing gets done editing and posts, it will be my birthday. So May 3rd, 2020, my birthday, I'm 45. Holy frick, that's old. But this here is a figure that I have wanted for quite some time now because it's one of my favorite looks of Luke Skywalker. My favorite look is Bespin. My favorite look overall is Bespin Luke. But this one right here, I really, really liked him in that Hoth Snowspeeder outfit. 
I have the Snowspeeder on pre-order, the big ass Snowspeeder. I'm really looking forward to that. That thing's gonna be huge. Anyway, here's Luke. And they did have all of the other ones on the back here except for the Hoth Trooper. They did not have the Hoth Trooper. I'm assuming the same guy that picked up another figure, which I'll talk about here in a couple minutes, also picked up all the Hoth Troopers in the area because uh, there's no Hoth Troopers. But I found this one here. This is the one that I wanted the most. But I definitely want the Lando and I definitely want a couple of the Hoth Troopers. But there's the first pick up there. If you watch my live streams, you'll know that I picked this one up as well, but uh, I wanted to share this one with you on this video. I got this Spawn. So I had pre-ordered this one from GameStop months ago, and they finally called me, and uh, I had called them a few times, and I was like, is this thing still coming in? And they're like, we think it is. Some people's pre-orders got canceled. So the whole distribution of this figure totally got screwed up. But uh, they finally called me and they're like, hey, you got it in. So I did the curbside pickup and I got this spawn here from Mortal Kombat. This one has the sword. There is a running change on this figure. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe all future orders of this figure. So if you pre-ordered it, you didn't get it in, you might get the second run which has a different weapon. It has a mace instead of a sword. So I think I might actually keep this one on card. As much as I want to open this one up and uh, check its articulation and stuff, I think I might keep it on card because I'm not sure how many of these actually got out. There you go, there is the spawn, if I could figure out this camera. Holy frick, this is gonna take some time to get used to. There's the spawn with the sword, first run. All right, and then the last two pickups that I have for Modern, uh, one of these is going to complete my Dangerous Danny Davis referee, builder referee figure from WWE Elite. I picked up the Mick Foley, so bang bang right there. I got Mick Foley. I'm, uh, I'm trying to build a collection, a small collection, of uh, WWE or WWF Attitude Era figures and Ruthless Aggression Era figures. And uh, the next one here is also part of that uh, kind of Ruthless Aggression Era, but uh, this was the last one I needed to build my Danny Davis Builder Ref. The only one I have not picked up from this is the Kofi. And I think Kofi just comes with different hands for Danny Davis. So I'll have a completed figure with this one right here. So there is Cactus Jack, Mick Foley. I still want to try and pick up a Mankind. I have a few figures that they've already produced with WWE Elite, uh, which are very hard to find now. I want a Mankind. I want uh, Dudley Boys. I want a DX, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels. So there's a lot of figures that they've already done uh, that uh, they're just kind of hard to come by now. So those are just kind of on the list. So I got the Kurt Angle Network Spotlight figure. That is an awesome looking Kurt Angle right there. And he's got the You Suck Thank You shirt. But that's a badass looking Kurt Angle right there. I like this a lot. But the one that's in this wave, they had the whole wave there. They had Wendy Richter, they had Woken Matt Hardy, but they did not have Ricochet. So Ricochet is the one that everyone's looking for. It's going for a lot of money, I guess, right now, like $60, $70, crazy money for a brand new figure, but I'm happy I got this one. I actually plan on doing uh, an entire episode on WWE Elite figures just to show you my entire wrestling figure collection. It's not that much. I mean, it's basically like three shelves worth, but I do have quite a few figures that I'm very uh, fond of. So uh, I'm gonna open these guys up off camera. I'm gonna put them in a display and then I'll share a video with you guys. If you're big WWE Elite fans, you might wanna check that video out, but it'll be all uh, wrestling figures. So. There you go. Uh, the only other thing that I want to show you now uh, as part of this haul. Actually, let me show you one other thing. So I shared this on a live stream. I'm not going to go into great detail. Check out the live stream. Uh, I think it was the last one I did, uh, but check that one out because I went into great detail on how to spot a fake NECA comic book Ninja Turtle. So uh, I bought this one on eBay. This is a Raphael. This is the only one that I need in the comic book NECA Ninja Turtles. And I... Uh, I thought it was a real one because the eBay auction stated it was an actual NECA product and the guy had a ton of positive feedback so I trusted it. Well I got it in hand and I immediately realized it was a fake. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the detail on how to spot the differences. There's a ton of differences, mostly due to paint. Uh, specifically the, like the stomach, the shell, the overall color of the skin, the pliability of the bandana. Check out, I think it was my last live stream, check that one out and uh, you'll see how to spot a fake 
comic book NECA Ninja Turtle, but I'm still on the lookout for a real Raphael. And then the last thing, right here. So as a kid, I uh, collected a lot of different toys, and I was very, very fond of these as a kid. Uh, I took a few of them in my pockets wherever I went. If I'd get bored, wherever I was, I'd pull them out and just start playing with them. Uh, so they are Starcom. So I saw that a YouTuber by the name of Justice Curry, check out his channel by the way, he, he's a, a vintage toy collector, he's got a great channel. But I saw on Facebook where he was selling part of his Starcom collection. So I was immediately very, very interested because you just don't see a lot of Starcom anymore. And he had bought these, I guess, from another collector. So it's only one other collector, one other owner of these things. So I jumped on it right away because I absolutely loved Starcom as a kid. Uh, I'm gonna show you the figures that I picked up first. I also picked up a vehicle, which is a grail to me. This one right here is James Dash Derringer. I had this specific figure as a kid. I had this exact figure. These three figures which I'm about to show you are all the three that I had in my pocket as a kid. This came out in 86, so I was about 10 years old, but I would keep these guys in my pocket, but there's James Derringer. I love the card art on these, and the back of the card is even better because it has all of the characters. And I love it when vintage figures have the price tag still, $1.98 right there. That looks like, could have been like a KB or a Toys R Us sticker. And then uh, this one I think was actually my favorite one just because I love the orange color and uh, I wanted to be an astronaut as a kid. I actually went to space camp when I was a kid and I remember uh, I would see pictures of astronauts wearing kind of like orange uh, suits and stuff. So this one, I think this was my favorite one. Very, very cool. There's the card and Circus World right there, 99 cents. It got marked down twice, but there is Pete Yablonski. One of the little gimmicks that they had on Starcom, if you could see the bottom of his feet right there, are magnets. Uh, they had magnets in the feet so that they could magnetize to the vehicles, because the vehicles had like little metal plates in them. Uh, and then here's the final figure that I picked up. This is John Griffin, AKA Slim. And then once again, there's the back. Very, very awesome. You don't really see Starcom figures on card uh, anymore. They're very, very hard to find. I always said to myself, if I'm gonna get into Starcom and start collecting Starcom, this one right here is the one that I want. This is like the Grail. This is like the Castle Grayskull if you're a Motu collector. This is like the Killer Whale if you're a G.I. Joe collector. The Starmax Bomber, absolutely freaking gorgeous. This has been removed from the box, but it is absolutely complete. And this box is in great condition, as you can see. But there you go, the Starcom Starmax Bomber. And I am gonna showcase this vehicle. These were actually included with the box. I said the box was complete, uh, and it comes with everything. Uh, this was a little thing here that came inside the box where you could join the US Space Force back in the, uh, the mid 80s. You filled out this little form here and they sent you these little decals and stuff and you got a little membership thing. Uh, it does come with the instruction manual as well. I love when these vintage like toys, if it's complete and it, the box looks nice and it comes with the instruction manual. I mean, this is like historical documentation to me as a toy collector. Um, and then these right here, I freaking love these. This right here is a little catalog that shows the different vehicles that are in the collection for Starcom figures right there. And then the other side is the good guys. There's the Star Max Bomber at the top. I do really want a Star Wolf uh, because the Star Wolf is magnetized and it can actually magnetize at the top of the Star Max Bomber. I'm getting more and more into the, uh, the vintage stuff. So while I do love modern figures, the vintage stuff is kind of where my heart is. So um, anytime I could find the vintage stuff for a good price, I'm gonna jump on those, but let me go ahead and showcase this Star Max Bomber and I'll be right back with you. All right guys, so I switched cameras back to my iPhone just because it's a little bit more maneuverable with what I'm doing here. So this is the Star Max Bomber Starcom. This is from 1986. And there's a bunch of uh, different play features and things you can do with this ship. So it is currently in flight mode right now, but it can also go into I guess loading or pre-flight mode. Uh, I'm gonna show you some of the different functionality here. So you'll see this little knob here in the front. 
The first thing you can do here is rotate it and the little landing gear comes down. So now it is in, I guess, pre-flight mode. Um, this thing moves up and down, as you can see here, and then it also swivels. These guns also move around and then also up and down. And see this button right here? I'm gonna push this button and so now the cockpit is open and then here is the pilot figure right here. And just to show you just a close up of what the Starcom figure looks like. Very, very small, got a little visor here. And again, they have the magnetized feet. You can see the little magnets in the feet there. And there's certain spots on the ship that are magnetized. So when I put him on top of this ship and I turn it upside down, he is not falling off. He's magnetized to that ship. So that's a cool little feature that they have on all the little Starcom figures. But there he is right there. There's uh, other things on this ship as well, like these bombs that go in the back and they have little magnets as well. So I don't know why you would want to do it when he uh, can magnetize the bombs to his feet. Uh, there are a couple guns that come out of the side of the ship here. Basically you just push in right here and then these guns pop out, you push in there, and then you can pull the guns out. So, just an additional laser on the ship there. There's a little button right here, and if you pull that, that cockpit opens as well. And you can see there are two seats in there. One right there, a co-pilot, and a seat right there for the gunner. The other thing you used to see on the cartoon is uh, before it was in flight, when it was still kind of like loading and stuff, they would have the wings up. So the wings actually do fold up on these. And this is basically how you would see the ship uh, in like a little docking bay on the cartoon, ready for the pilots to jump in, the co-pilots, pilot there. Um, and then here is this little gimmick in the back. Let me show you this. So when you pull that, there's some gears inside, as you can hear, and this little troop carrier is in the back here. So you can actually seat one, two, and then three, four, this comes out, and you would actually see this in the cartoon, this little troop carrier thing. Um, and then I believe you could actually not put the troop carrier in the back and then put these down and you can actually put a small vehicle in the back here and then load it up inside the Star Max bomber. So that's a pretty cool little gimmick there. But uh, here is the little troop carrier. Pretty cool. I think that might be magnetized as well. Let's see. Yep, it sure is. So you can see there's a lot of uh, playability in Starcom. Uh, so you can kind of see why I liked it so much as a kid. But um, the other thing that this has is this little bomb area in the back. And if you load the bombs, and there is a vehicle that um, you can actually like kind of simulate loading. The bombs have little magnets on them there. But basically, you would just let's kind of turn it. And as you turn it, it drops the bombs. So pretty damn cool, if I do say so myself, but there you go. That is the uh, functionality of this Star Max bomber. I really, really love it. Uh, it's kind of hard to find these complete. Uh, it's hard to find them in such good condition. It's hard to find them with box. So when I saw that uh, Justice Curry had one for sale, I did not uh, hesitate. I do want to pick up a Star Wolf, which is the smaller vehicle, because the Star Wolf actually magnetizes to this part right here and sits on top of the Star Max Bomber. But there you go, guys. There's a little uh, short little showcase on the Star Max Bomber from Starcom. There you go, guys. The Starcom Star Max Bomber. Absolutely gorgeous. Very, very beautiful. That's it for this video, guys. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, hopefully you're still sticking around, despite the fact I haven't made an actual video in uh, about a month. But uh, that is it for now. I will be shooting more videos in the very, very near future. Again, I'm gonna do a WWE 
Elite collection video, I'm going to do uh, a full collection video since I've actually sold off a lot of stuff here. My collection looks a little different, so I'm going to be doing a collection video. I'm going to be doing a separate video for all my Marvel Legends. I'm going to show you that entire collection. But uh, thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. I will see you soon, and adios for now.